Right, so what is limerence? I've realized actually on my own channel, I've not made a direct video just answering the question of what limerence is. And I'm sure we could do a few videos and I'm gonna be exploring many caveats as to the definition of limerence. So let's be precise where we can, but also be willing to accept the limitations of the very little research that is out there on the subject. But I will express what I think limerence is based on my exposure to many, many clients. I'm in the hundreds now, just my own study of limerence. Right, so if you've never heard of it, hopefully this video will clue you up. And if you have heard of it, it will get you, I guess, on the same page as what I understand the definition to be. It's a definition that is what I'm holding based on what I have access to right now in terms of information and the experiences I've had with clients. But I'm willing to change it because limerence is not something that's defined. It doesn't have enough research on it. So that's going to be the big caveat here. But hopefully there'll be enough here for you to understand generally what someone's talking about when they say the word limerence. So, hi, my name is Marius. I'm a counselling psychology doctoral student living in London. And on this channel, we talk about psychology, mental health, and anything I think you might find interesting or useful. Remember, anything you see on social media and the internet is not a replacement for therapy. So, limerence. Limerence was defined the first time that the term was coined by Dr. Torothy Tenov in the 1970s in her book, Love and Limerence. Dr. Tenov was seeing that a lot of her clients were experiencing this very overwhelming obsession, let's say, about someone or preoccupation with someone either they never had a relationship with or they did and it broke off. But it was very different to anything else that already existed, such as love addiction, relationship OCD, OCD generally, anxiety issues, self-esteem issues, even though I think all of those can overlap with limerence potentially, which is why we need more research on it. But to be specific about limerence, what is limerence? Why is it different from other types of excessive interest in someone, let's say? So limerence is very fantasy-based. It's a lot of rumination. It's a lot of daydreaming, right? So the majority of what happens in limerence is in the person's head. It can be someone you've never met. It could be someone all the way to had a relationship and it broke up. I would say that is the spectrum. Never met someone, someone online maybe. It could be a bit more like erotomania. So that's where someone believes that someone who's famous, for example, is sending them messages through the TV. It's like a delusion that this famous person actually knows you and is sending you messages. So that's not what's happening with limerence but you could be aware that this person doesn't know you and be limerent towards them in that you are excessively engaging in the fantasizing about them. So they're fantasizing a lot, what does that mean? It can be literally the moment you wake up until the moment you sleep for months or years. That is an incredible amount of time and energy to be going into fantasizing about a specific person, especially when you've maybe not met them or they don't want to be with you or have told you no, or you know, it's maybe, but probably not. That's a, an incredible amount of time and energy, right? So you can see the detriment this will have on somebody's life to be limerent for an extended period of time. Now, the nature of the fantasizing is very much based on the idea of the limerent object. So the person that you're limerent towards accepting you or kind of acknowledging you in a way that is meaningful. So it might be that you wanna become part of their social group or you want them to have you as their favorite or you want them to have you as their partner, a boyfriend, girlfriend, a husband, whatever. Your fantasy can kind of take form in any one of those ways. But basically it's always about being brought in and accepted by the limerent object. It is as if they are the only person in the world that you need to accept you and your life would be upgraded you would be like the best version of yourself everything would be perfect that's very much the tone of limerence is that they are the only thing that could fill that hole that void of needing to be accepted in that way and that could take many forms like for example if it's just social it might be that they are more popular you feel like they're more popular than you and you idealize that about them and them accepting you means you becoming as popular as they are with them as part of being close to them. It could be they are funnier or more successful and you just want to be around them to have uh, engage in those funny conversations or interesting conversations or that you become as successful with them. Maybe you both work in the same industry but they seem to have it better than you, they've done better than you, maybe they're a bit older than you and you just want to become like them. So there's something about them that is you're looking up to, and it's almost like this limerent object. When you say limerent object, to me it means the mental representation of them, which is fed by the fantasies, is based on the inadequacy you feel you have and the thing that you think they have. So they are more popular, they are more successful, they are more intelligent. So basically that gives the energy to your mind to start to 
extrapolate on these fantasies, these stories, and suddenly being accepted by them is the only way you think it's possible for you to fulfill, to fill this gap, right? Really strong one about limerence is that your emotional state will depend heavily on whether the limerent object gives you positive or negative feedback. So that might be just texting you, like knowing that you exist, speaking to you, or the opposite, you know, ignoring you, not knowing you exist, giving you actively negative feedback, such as rejecting you, those will cause primal changes in your emotional state. You'll be distraught if you get something negative from them. You'll be elated if you get positive from them. Of course, there's, there's a whole spectrum in between that. So it's not just one or the other, but the potential for one person to throw your emotionality that far is unprecedented. Probably most people who experience limerence will be shocked by that thing. It's like how much my day, my week, like my life, my ability to enjoy things is fully dependent on how they are going to treat me, how they are treating me in the now. And of course, you can see how that will start to impact your behavior. You will do things that will, whatever you need to do to get them to give you the positive feedback you need, finding ways to run into them, saying exactly what you think you need to say in order to gain their favor. And you might not lie or anything, but you might just selectively show parts of yourself to make yourself seem whatever you think they need to see in order to accept you. And anything that comes above that, you know, it could be you start to design your days around them. It might be the only thing you're focusing on really is thinking about them, daydreaming about them. And there's kind of, I'd say two flavors of this in that you could be limerent in a way that actually affects how you operate in the real world. So people might notice that you're limerent because of the way you are overly interested in them, overly seeking their approval, or acting in ways that are emotionally unstable because of the dependency on how they treat you. But the other is that you might on the surface look like you are not limerent, but the amount that you're fantasizing about them, it's literally like if people could see, if they knew, it would be a shameful amount of time that you are spending thinking about them. And it's shameful to you. You don't want it to be the case, of course. It's really excessive, like, and I cannot stress that enough. It is when it's in full force, there's almost nothing that can take precedent over it. There's nothing that can become more important than the limerence. So the getting approved by them and the idea of them, etc. So hopefully you can start to see the angle of it, right? So it's like excessive daydreaming about this person. It's mostly the, a longing for them in the fantasy rather than in the real world, even though you may also pursue them in the real world. Your emotional dependency on them is incredibly high. Like I can't even imagine a situation where you're more emotionally dependent on someone. Of course, there are pathologies, that's an exception. I mean, in a way that typical experiences will dictate. There's not many people that, you know, your, your mother giving you negative feedback once, it's not going to cause your whole life to spiral. You get a bit annoyed and you'll be sad. Of course, that's a very important person to you. But the limerent object is one person with utmost control over your emotional state based on the way they treat you. It's very excessive. Then, then also this like needing something that they have. There's something about them that is special. It might not be that you idealize the whole of them. So you might see them as a flawed person but there is something about what they can give you that is special that someone else cannot give you, or they have something that makes them special that you don't think anyone else has quite to that degree. And so you need to get it from them. You need their approval. You need their flavor of the thing that they have that's special and you feel you lack it. And you think that by unifying the two of you, that you'll both be better, but mainly you'll be better. You'll feel whole, you'll feel complete, you'll feel like you've gone to the next level, you've improved yourself, you've finally bridged that gap between who you are and who you wanna be. They suddenly become the solution to that. You know, we all feel like to some degree that there is a gap between who we are and who we wanna be. And I guess, you know, in therapy and that kind of stuff, we're trying to explore why that is. Why is it that you feel that you're lacking at all as you are? Yes, it's good to have dreams, but does that need to mean that you feel like you are lacking in the present moment? You can work towards those without feeling this inadequacy. In limerence, everything about who you wanna be it's kind of encapsulated by this person or the idea of this person, the limerent object. So as you can see, there's a lot of different angles like the romantic, the personal goals and who I wanna be, ideals all shrunk into this one person and the idea of them. And that is the only thing that you can see. That's the only thing that you can focus on. So hopefully you can see how overwhelming, bewildering, this experience is. And the sad thing is that there's just not much research on it at all. So the communities that have developed online are very much 
grassroots. You know, they're sure they're based, they kind of started from Dr. Tanov's book. And I think if we're going to have anything as canon, like something that is just the basis of the word, we should go to that book for the most part. I'm sure some research will show other things that weren't included there, or maybe some things that she thought was part of it, but we could distinguish, or maybe that there are multiple types of limerets. But other than that, please, please be wary of the content you see online. Keep all of it with a grain of salt, even if you think that person is qualified. And of course, I'm in that group as with everyone else. So I hope I'm being very clear in saying that I understand my limitations and I know that this is not defined. And so anything I say is tentative and subject to change based on the research. I only share things online so that people will potentially benefit from it or understand it, but we should all be open-minded as to what it is and not be too dogmatic about it. And most importantly, not to take anything as gospel in terms of advice or anything like that. I'm not offering advice, I'm offering information about how I understand it and perhaps what I think in theory might work, but it's not advice to you. It's just something you might want to think about. If you want advice and support, you should seek a licensed professional, ideally close to you so you can see them in person. If not, however you can manage that. There is no escaping the work, okay, in getting over this. So watching one YouTube video or 700 of them is not gonna get you through this without the appropriate help. So seek the help of a licensed professional. I'm sorry they might not actually know what limerence is, and so you might need to help them and say, hey, I'd really appreciate if you read up on this because I, I need you to know this, even though the, our relationship, therapeutic relationship is really good. I need you to specifically know limerence because I see clients all the time who say, like, it's such a relief to have someone know actually what it is and what it's not. So hopefully, like, they'll be able to give you that too. But there is no shortcut. There's no quick fix to get out of this. So please appreciate that. I also appreciate how difficult it is to be going through this. And so do yourself the right service and find the right help. Give yourself the amount of time you need to heal from this, to learn through this, and do not take anyone's word for law when it comes to limerence, even if it seems like they have the credentials to do so, because not everyone is willing to do the research or speak as humbly as they should, given their experience or knowledge about a topic. They will just say it because they want more followers and that, and unfortunately I find that to be quite unethical. And I hope that you have the sense and will have the sense to know when someone is doing that. And the way of doing that is just always being critical because you can do the research and understand it, Others can as well. Just because they speak confidently does not mean they actually know what they're talking about. Okay? Cool. Hopefully that made it clear. Right? Look after yourself. See you soon.